Hello. In the previous lecture, we discussed the formation of the energy bands in solids. Now, how can we differentiate between the conductor, insulator and the semiconductors on the basis of the energy band diagrams? Now, in case of the metals, either the conduction band and the valence band either overlap each other or the valence band is partially filled. As a result, large number of levels are vacant or available for the electrons to jump. Electron gains little energy and jumps to the higher levels. As the electron jump to the higher levels, the vacancy is left in the valence band. And this vacancy is called hole. When a field is applied, the electrons moves in the conduction band and is drift, drifts in the direction opposite to the direction of the field. And holes in the valence band moves in the same direction of the electric field. And the total current is the sum of the current due to the motion of the electrons in the conduction band and the motion of the holes in the valence band is the total current. So more and more electrons will jump to the conduction band. Larger will be the conductivity. In the case of insulator, the energy gap or the forbidden band between the conduction band and the valence band is large. It is of the order of 6 electron volt. So, electron needs high energy to jump to the conduction band. And very few electrons jump to the conduction band. As there is a less number of the electrons in the conduction band, so there is a less number of holes in the valence band. And the total current is also very, very small. It is almost negligible. In case of semiconductors, the energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band is lesser than the insulator and more than the conductor. As a result, its conductivity lies in between the insulator and the conductors. The forbidden band in case of semiconductor is of the order of 1 electron volt. Energy gap in case of the silicon is 1.1 electron volt and in case of germanium it is 0.74 electron volt. The semiconductors at the zero Kelvin behaves as a perfect insulator. But at room temperature, say at 27 degrees Celsius, that is 300 Kelvin, that is 300 times larger, the sum of the electrons from the valence band acquire the thermal energy and move to the conduction band. It causes the current. This, the resistivity of the semiconductor lies in between the conductors and insulators. So, the intrinsic semiconductor is a pure conductor. For example, the germanium and the silicon crystals are semiconductors. Each atom in the crystals has four valence electrons and form four covalent bonds by sharing the electrons with the neighboring atoms. As already I told you, at room temperature, some of the electrons break away from the bonds and become free. At the same time, equal number of holes are created in the bonds. Hence, conduction in an intrinsic semiconductor is due to the motion of the electrons in the conduction band and the holes in the valence band. 
or we can say the number of holes and the electrons are always equal. The electrons and the holes responsible for the electrical conductions are called intrinsic carriers and it is represented as Ni and at any instant Ni is equal to N equals to N H and it is called intrinsic carrier. It is intrinsic carrier number of holes number of electrons. When electric field is applied across the semiconductor, the electron drifts in the direction opposite to the electric field and pulls in the direction of the electric field. So, the total current at any instant is the sum of the electronic current and pole current. Because the number of electrons and holes both are very small in the pure semiconductors. So the conductivity is very, very small. The fraction of the electrons excited to the conduction band at a temperature T is given by this relation, where E is the energy gap between the conduction band or the valence band. Or you can say it is the energy of the forbidden band. K is Boltzmann constant and T is the absolute temperature. This formula is also applicable in case of insulators. As the conductivity of the pure semiconductor is low, so to increase the conductivity, the atoms of the third and the fifth groups are added to the semiconductors. And the process of the deliberate addition of the atoms of the third and the fifth group into the pure semiconductor is called doping. The atoms of the third and the fifth groups are called doping. Dopants are boron, aluminium, indium, gallium. These all substances have three electrons in their valence orbit. And we also use the atoms of the fifth group like arsenic, antimony, phosphorus. All they have five electrons in their valence orbit. The semiconductors containing the dopant atoms is known as extrinsic semiconductor or the doped semiconductor. The methods of doping, number one, the dopant atoms are added in the molten form of the intrinsic semiconductor or it can be produced or doping can be done by heating the semiconductor in the atmosphere containing the dopant atoms. Third, by bombarding the intrinsic semiconductor with the ions of the dopant atoms. There are two types of the semiconductors and type semiconductor in which the pure semiconductor is doped with the atoms of the fifth group. P-type semiconductor when a semiconductor is doped with the atoms of the third group. Thank you and have a nice day.